Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. So welcome to the podcast today. We're talking about whether it's worth having a flight simulator at home to accompany your training. And we've also got Dave back on the podcast, mainly because we couldn't find anybody else. But welcome, Dave. (laughs) Thanks so much. (laughs) Talking home simulators. So there are varying degrees of home simulators. The cheapest option really, I think, um, at the moment is probably running an Xbox with Flight Simulator 2020 with some yoke and uh, rudder pedals. I've seen other people um, running uh, prepared 3D and things on on, uh, PCs. That tends to be slightly more expensive just for the acquisition cost of the equipment. Um, I think for a decent sort of spec PC, um, something that's half reasonable, you're probably going to end up spending somewhere between two and a half and five grand uh, with some monitors, uh, depending on the spec. And then there are add-ons and things you can get. So... You can get different scenery packages and things to make it more realistic, depending on the software. There are upgrades um, available in terms of uh, VATSIM as well. So if anybody's not used VATSIM, it's like a virtual air traffic service, but it's got real people on there pretending to be controllers, which is, is interesting. And add-ons like Sky Demon. So if you use Sky Demon for um, helping with your visual navigation, you can link Sky Demon to your simulator. You can also buy individual components now for simulators. So if you've got a, an aircraft with a Garmin 430, you can actually buy a Garmin 430 simulator unit. Likewise, G1000, pretty much anything out there, you can get it. Uh, different transponder modules. So really, if you wanted to, you can kind of, um, you know, build to whatever spec you want um, in terms of simulators. There are different screen options as well. There are wraparound screens, um, single and multi-projector options. So it's really down to your imagination and your budget. Um, So Dave, you built your own sim in lockdown. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah. um, So first off, start started, I I just downloaded uh, a a free demo of uh, Microsoft Microsoft, uh, Simulator or X-Plane, whichever one it was. Uh, I then sort of went on a little bit and just just did it on a on a Mac. Um, put a uh, rudder pedals and a um, throttle quadrant and a yoke and played with that for a bit. And then started uh, as we were all bored in lockdown. Yeah. Uh, started mackling things together for it. <laughs> so it started off in the office, uh, just one screen and a few bits. And then I made a switch panel to make it a little bit more okay. realistic. Um, which was all home built that was just had a bit of a search around which we can go into if you want to um, yeah. and then started making uh, making sort of monitor screens buttons on those and whatnot mm-hmm. I turned it into a um, the first thing it, it sort of was was a Cirrus uh, vision jet uh, so it had <laughs> okay. two G1000 oh wow but it moved into the attic because I right. was still working from the office at home in lockdown uh, so after it but it was too big yeah um, and then it just went on from there really uh, it's now got its own uh, its own garage down the bottom of the garden and it's fully enclosed <laughs> two seats in it the lot <laughs> um, but yeah it's um, yeah my, mainly mainly just building my own bits in lockdown keeping uh, keeping busy really okay so how did you research getting the parts and what to use and uh, you, you can find anything you want on Google mm. um, the main thing which uh, I used all the way through was a site called Simvin, um, which is basically you can, you can buy a little circuit board. Uh, mm-hmm. It tells you what buttons you can use for certain things. Uh, it, it pretty much draws it out for you uh, okay. and gives you a list of things that you can buy. I mean, I've, I've always been quite good when it comes to uh, electronics and whatnot, so it, uh, it, it, went, uh, it went pretty quick when I was, I was making them. But, mm. um, but yeah, the majority was then on some of the forums and whatnot. Yeah, I, d- I didn't do a lot of research into it. I just thought, well, I want it to work, and I've seen somebody else do it, so there must be a way of doing it. Yeah, somehow. absolutely. Yeah. Um, went into a bit of free. Well, I even bought a three D printer for this. Um, I think it could probably cost me more to get the stuff to build the sim than what it did to actually build the sim. <laughs> now you got a sim factory. I've got a sim factory, three D printers, <laughs> laser cutters, all manner of stuff, all manner of stuff. Yeah. So computer spec wise, you know what spec computer you're running at the moment? Um, the, fir- the first 
uh, PC I started off as um, an AMD. It was, I, I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not that clued up with them. I think mm-hmm. it was like a, a quad core, mm-hmm. you know, your you lower grade gaming sort of motherboard and okay. um, a reasonable graphics card, which was yeah. fine to start with uh, until I started adding monitors. I mean, in total, it's got six now. Wow. Uh, but that runs off two computers, so I had yeah. to upgrade the motherboard on a, on a separate computer than the, um, I think it's a AMD... Five seven thousand X or something, which was a ridiculously expensive one. I don't know why it's not listening to that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it, it needs to be quite specced up if you're going to run a lot of visuals. Okay. Um, if you're not running that many visuals and it doesn't need mm. to be okay. um, need to be overly good, I think the, the lower grade was probably fifteen hundred quid's worth, whereas the higher grade is probably about five grand. Yeah, 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 okay. And you're using X Plane 11 at the minute, is that right? Uh, X Plane 11, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. That's what we use on our sim, funnily enough. And have you upgraded any of the visuals and things on it? Or? Yeah, so it's, I mean, I started off with some Orbix bits and bobs. Yeah, um, the scenery uh, packs. Yeah, the scenery packs, yeah. yeah. Um, what, one of the things, if, you, if you're going to build a sim, which I think is really important to do, is the basic planes that come with X Plane, mm. uh, they're pretty good. If you buy add on planes, they're mm. good, but they've got fantastic cockpits but we're not doing right. that because we're building our own panels yeah, yeah so yeah. i think just doing simple uh, upgrades to the existing planes to make yeah. the controls realistic that's yeah that's massive and it with trim and stuff like that it really makes a difference yeah okay um so you're running six monitors you say at the minute six in total yeah wow okay and at what point did you have to upgrade to two pcs in order to make that work it ran uh, so the, the six monitors are mainly the, the front visual. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a left and a right visual mm-hmm. for, the, for the side windows. Mm-hmm. We have VATSIM on one small monitor. Where, you know, yeah. We're talking like a tiny little sort of eight inch thing. Yeah. Um, the, uh, sorry, the 530s visual, the instrument clusters visual behind panel. Uh, oh, I see, right. Okay. So all of those ones added together. Now, yeah. I, I could just about, off the high spec PC, I could just about run all three monitors for visual only yeah. off the um, off the one PC. As yeah. soon as I start added all the others, well, while mm. I started running out of spaces to plug monitors in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and second, it, it, was, it was cooking it, absolutely cooking it. Yeah. Um, I used to, I've had a little fridge, a little beer fridge, and I actually yeah. opened the door at one point uh, <laughs> just to try and get it cool and had the side <laughs> off on the... On the um, so that's when I shifted over then to two PCs. Okay. Uh, I then just used a lower grade one, literally just for all the avionics, and it yeah. also does the main uh, main monitor. But um, so yeah, for people who don't know, um, our sim is the same as Dave's in that you have a monitor behind the panel to mm-hmm. right. to basically project the instruments into the the clusters that you make. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what was the hardest part of building it? Because you made switches and things for it and everything. You know, what, what was? I know you're quite handy anyway, but what was the, the hardest? The, hard, the hardest bit was getting it down from the attic when I moved it to the shed without the wife seeing. <laughs> 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 now, I think the hardest bit, um, audio, was, okay. the, was the hardest thing with it because I was using um, because I was using Vatsim. Yeah, um, it was multiple audio cards running through it and then also for the headsets so Mm. it's got com headsets just like you would in a normal plane yeah to get those to work together Mm. with that sim and audio out of all the surround speakers i'd I'd say that was probably the hardest thing to set up on it and if anything's going to go wrong with a sim then that's what goes wrong so have you got like a some sort of separate audio interface for the headsets and things then? No, no no not at all um on the visit there's a download i think it was uh, I think it's something like Banana Bonza or something, some, okay. some weird little splitting audio package which you have right. to start up with explain. Okay. Uh, but no, they're, they're pretty much they're USB headsets okay. um, directed to that software. Uh, and then you are the they Chinese one. like your real ones? Or? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, I bought it from you, so it must have been Chinese. I think even the uh, even the Bose has got Chinese in it somewhere. It's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> So on reflection, uh, being that you had to make your own, uh, you know, had to buy your own um, equipment and things just to build it, mm. do you think it would have been more cost effective to, to pre-buy something similar? No. Well, yeah. I, I think that could be a close one. I mean, to start with, I didn't, um, I didn't buy the laser cutter. I, mm. 
I've made all these panels. I mean, I've, I've been woodworking for years, so mm. I, I sort of did it all by hand. Uh, the reason why I upgraded is I wanted to make it more professional. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I think if you were just literally going to get a, a piece of a black plastic, drill some holes and mount your switches in it and yeah, put a little sticker right. underneath, which is what I did. I just used a label yeah. machine at the time. Yeah. So let's talk about pre-built then. So this is where it can get really expensive. So yeah. there are companies like Redbird and Alsim that make certified sims for professional flight training. Obviously the ones we're talking about are non-certified. These are just things you'd use at home to practice with. So there are companies that will make you uncertified ones that are more cost effective to work with at home i think the cheapest ones are around about 10 grand mm. for a for a basic sort of cockpit and then you can go all the way up to hundreds of thousands if you start going into the the kind of certified um, fnpt2 mm. uh, da42 sims and things um so it really does depend on your budget and what you want from it but i think the key takeaway is that um, if you have an uncertified simulator, you can't log any hours at all yeah. on it. But I believe if you have an FNPT2 simulator, you can log four or five hours of PPL training on it, obviously with a flight instructor. Um, so we spoke to, to Faisal, funnily enough, earlier today. He's one of our members. He's got a very, very nice uh, brand new PA28. It's a diesel FADEC. It's got G1000, all the bells and whistles on it. And because it's so different, he decided to invest in a home simulator, which is an actual replica of his cockpit. Mm. So he paid um, Flight Simulators UK to build him this replica in his house. And he, he, we, you know, we talked to him about it, and he said the reason why he got it is because it was so complex with the G1000 and thing, and, and the processes with it. He just wanted to get used to yeah. it at home. And, and we actually sent instructors round to his house to, to instruct him on oh, his really? own sim. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think if you've got something really complex like that, then maybe it's a good idea. Um, but for most people, it's what you get out of it is the key. You know, are you going to get an, anything out from the investment you make in it? Um, and we, we actually had a, a pre-built simulator from the same company, um, which is, is set up to replicate most SEP aircraft. Um, but that's got Garmin 430 and 530, quite useful for procedural stuff. Um, but Dave, you know, when you built yours, what was the purpose of your build? What what did you use it for? Uh, to, to start off with, it, it, it was something to do. Uh, I've, I've always liked the idea of flying, um, but it, it was literally something to do. Uh, yeah. A friend of mine was a pilot, so he'd come round and had a go, and he went, oh, this is all right. So he's wanting to do this, wanting, and that's obviously when it goes further and further and further. <laughs> uh, in the end, though, um, I thought, well, I'm flying this. I'm probably not doing it completely right. Yeah. Uh, I quite fancy a lesser. The wife actually bought me one here, just just a, uh, I don't know, red letter day, whatever you call them. But uh, yeah. yeah, we did we did a trial flight and um, a little after that started with the training. Mm -hmm. Then that's when I started using it a little bit more and I, I took the unrealistic feel away from it. So I got rid of these screens, which were G1000s, which yeah. I'd done and all the rest of it. And then I turned it into basically a, a 172. Okay. Uh, because I thought, well, that's what I'm going to fly. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, so, so I'll do it like that. And um, so we did. And I, I, I think it, I think it helped a lot with the training uh, or even just knowing my way around the cockpit, if, if you like to start yeah. with, uh, I mean, it can, teach you some bad bits mm -hmm. uh it, there's some bits it can't teach you plenty of them um but i think you, overall it, it it gave me a good understanding of it because you were flying the 172r weren't you yes. originally yeah. so they're, they're quite readily available on x-plane mm, um, yeah, yeah. so yeah that's pretty good so benefits then you, you say it was beneficial for just familiarizing yourself with the aircraft um are there any parts of the training you say it didn't really help you with it, it doesn't give you any feel for, for an aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, as, as much as you try and set them up and get uh, get it to be as realistic as possible, it, it still never will give you the feel. It most definitely doesn't teach you how to land, uh, yeah. how to flare, absolutely yeah. not. Um, but other than that, I think it, you, you can learn a lot from it. it, it again, it, it's, it doesn't teach you how to fly a plane, but no. it, it, sets you, you know, it sets you off well, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, so do you feel there was any parts of the training it's really not beneficial for? You said about landing, obviously. I don't think the controls are weighted well enough that you could actually feel the, the you know what it's like to land. Yeah, um, it, I mean, I think that's 
You're right, and it, and it's and it, that depends what what sort of yolks you're using as well. I mean, I started yeah. off of a cheap Satitech thing; it was absolutely yeah. useless. Moved up to the honeycomb, completely different. And then mm. I did some upgrades on that to make it uh, okay. to make it better. Put change the bands in it and whatnot, but mm. uh, and that helped. But it, it, it's not that; it's it's the visual, the sound; it's everything yeah. all together. And, and yeah. like you know, I mean. Not even an instructor really teaches you how to land it. No, you have to no. learn your flare yourself. You it's, do, yeah. It's, um, you know, so there's no way a simulator's going to do that. No. Okay. Um, so we um, we kind of spoke to Steve. I had a training earlier and sort of got his opinion on what the pros and cons are for using a simulator for PPL training. Now, obviously, just to be clear, unless you've got a certified simulator and you're with a flight instructor in this, you know, in a a declared training organization or an ATO, you can't log these hours, okay? Mm -hmm. But it is something that you can use to practice. So he, he kind of said the pros were, it's great for practicing procedural stuff like zone transits and things like that. Yeah. Um, great for practicing emergencies without the risk. So you could do like engine failures downwind and if you don't get the glide right, you can see what the shortfall was and how it would have affected you. Um, it's great for familiarization um, of flight equipment and avionics. So if you're practicing how to use, uh, I don't know, Garmin 430s and things, it will help you practice and using that at home and then go and using it in the real thing. It's really good for VOR tracking, things like that. Yeah. They're a bit more procedural. Uh, and you can kind of concentrate more on the task in hand without um, having the actual pressure of flying, although you're, you're still flying. Yeah. Um, instrument appreciation, um, practicing doing your time turns to get out of um, yep. instrument conditions on, on your PPL and um, practice communication as well. So one thing um, we said is about VATSIM and we also had a, we've got headsets set up in our sim behind us. And what we did is we used walkie talkies in ours and we had an event where we actually practiced doing zone transits on Sky Demon. And we had people impersonating the radar controller yeah. at Birmingham. We had Ali and people like that running around the, the front out there pretending to be other aeroplanes <laughs> on me, <laughs> which was quite amusing. Um, but it was good because we were we were putting them through the paces and we were sort of saying, OK, well, you know, what happens if you don't get your approval for the zone transit? What are you going to do now? Yeah, yeah. And people got really caught up by that mm, stuff, even yeah, in the sim. Yeah, you know, yeah so. I can imagine, yeah. Um, so it does have its, its benefits. Um, the cons, then, let's have a look at the cons. So... One of the things that is quite obvious when you get people who fly simulators a lot is if they don't fly much in the actual aeroplane with an instructor, they quite often practice bad habits. Yeah, definitely. And they, you know, they bring them to the flight lesson. So just be. I think one of the biggest things for that um, is instruments, staring yeah. at instruments. Yeah, yeah. You don't look out the window. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, if you're on a sim, within reason, it's the only way of flying them sometimes. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I think. I, I had uh, my, my very first lesson, uh, I, I had them covered up with post-it notes and all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's people do it and it's a common thing. So yeah. I think really, if you're going to practice on, on a simulator, ask your instructor what to practice yeah, exactly. and then maybe even get their help in planning the lesson. Or in some cases, like I said about Pfizer, we sent the instructor around to his house yeah, and said, yeah. look, if you're willing to pay for it, we'll send somebody on, you know, if you get something out of it. I mean, if, if you are using it to... to sort of help you learn to fly and you're going to be under instruction anyway then, then definitely I mean when, when I first started I had no idea I was ever yeah. going to get in a real plane and fly um, but um, but yeah you, once you realise the bad habits that you get you, you soon mm. stop yourself from doing those and uh, I simply turned the screen off and yeah. just stop looking at them and yeah, kept looking yeah. out the front and then yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it does work yeah. that's why we have lessons though yeah that's it and i think the other thing is the the control so depending on how expensive the controls are generally is how good the feel is about them but mm -hmm. you can't really simulate the weight of the controls and like you know if you you know yourself flying if you miss trim an aircraft you can't really simulate that very well mm. on a simulator the weight of it you know it, it's it, it can be done but it's expensive i mean you, yeah. you can have um what are called rumblers you can put them underneath the seat you can yeah. actually click them to the yokes and bolt okay. them on there so it, so yeah. the idea though is it i mean it, it's basically bass sound and it's yeah. a bit bit like vibration but a little different and then that that will add it in but it's it's pretty yeah. pricey to get that set up i mean if you go into that extent you may as well the motion simulator yeah, exactly. And then you might as well buy a real thing. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it, yeah. 
Uh, so we've got the lack of weight and feel of the controls. Some of them, depending on the model as well, the, the, the way the model on the simulators um, set up, and you can adjust all the parameters and things. Mm. We found that they can be a little bit over sensitive and things like that, or, you know, you can that's tune you, it out. But... You, you can, but that's where it comes down to upgrading the plane. Yeah. On, uh, yeah. I've, I've, I always found that the trim wheel, it, you had to be so precise yeah. and careful with it whereas in the plane you're flicking it all over the place yeah exactly um and, I, and I, I just got fed up with it so i just looked into it researched it a little bit it took me probably 10 minutes to find it and i found where somebody had gone well this is a problem and they completely change all the settings yeah put it into the folder into x plane and before you know it it's trimming like the real thing yeah so, yeah. so there are definitely ways of, of getting around <coughs> it. yeah improving it yeah I think it's just uh, you've got to realise that it's a continual, you know, yeah. process. You know? Well, when you used to flick it a little bit too far, we're talking a tiny amount, and it yeah. used to go oh, straight up and yeah, still yeah, we're thinking, yeah. okay, that's not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure it shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. And the next thing is sort of lack of immersion. So depending on how good your visuals are and how, you know, how many screens you've got, how deep your screens are, is how much you feel like you're actually in an aeroplane. Yeah. You know, you, you've said that you've now expanded to having side vision and things, but when we first got ours, it was a case of if you wanted to see out the side, you had to press a button to turn your and head. And turn in. it, yeah. yeah and it's, yeah, it's right. rubbish, it doesn't work, so. I think, I think I've been through pretty much every visual option that there is so far. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the minute, I'm still on a projector for the front, which I'm going to change that to a, to a 60 inch TV, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when I added the side ones in, that that that's when it made a difference. That's yeah. when I knew, you know, where I was. I could I could work out what you know if I'm flying along and I got Drake out at one side or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Just off a of front visual, it 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 didn't really uh, it didn't really do it. Yeah. And then the, the next thing really is the lack of not not so much motion, but you know if you've got turbulence you've got the wind blowing the aircraft around and stuff you can simulate it to some degree setting crosswinds up and things like that but you feel it in an aircraft yeah you know and it, you don't get that in a sim um, no, you don't even get a wind sock <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think i think that is kind of it's it's all very good practicing crosswind landings on the sim and things but you don't get that you know if you get wind shear and things like that you don't get that seat your pants stuff that you're no, like oh my you god you know what's just happened there sort of thing um, it all looks very still, and, yeah, and even if yeah. you set it up, I mean, I've set it onto max turbulence, max wind shear. I mean, it, the, the plane was somersaulting, so yeah. turned it down a bit. But e even when you've got it all set high, if you know what you're looking for, you yeah. can see it. But yeah, if yeah. you're just new to it, yeah. then it, it all it just wobbles the screen around basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're best off with that off. And then lack of traffic. So I know you were saying that you can simulate traffic. Is that right? Or? Yeah. So if you're on VATSIM um, and you you could basically look at the little map, see where everybody's flying and okay. go to one of those fields. I mean, obviously, we just put a, a code in and press a button and before you know it, you're on the apron. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you can fly the circuits with other people. There'll be traffic okay. all over the shop. Um, whereas if you go somewhere... Where there's no traffic, you might have a controller, but obviously you haven't got over traffic. But no, generally yeah. traffic's quite good. Uh, again, if you go in multi screens and things like that, it needs setting up properly, which takes a bit of uh, research. And again, to make sure you get the traffic out, all the visuals. Mm. So, uh, so, can you see the traffic? Yeah. So off, right. off your main screen, uh, you'll see the traffic. But what you won't do is off your side screens. If you've added right. those, you won't see it on there. Which you can do. You just have to put some codes into um, okay. into VATSIM and then it will start picking the traffic up uh, right. out, out the side window. So, you know, if you're taking off, you, you'd be able to see somebody downwind. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, one of the things I found from, it's, it's mainly because we didn't spend enough time upgrading the visuals well enough and I think we're limited with the one projector as well. Mm. Um, but it's difficult to dead reckon because the scenery's there, but it's not quite what you would expect to see. It's not quite detailed enough. I, th I think that is, the honest opinion, I think the problem is projectors. That, yeah. That's the problem. It doesn't yeah. matter how good your projector is, which is why I'm thinking of changing mine for a screen. Mm. My, my side visuals are absolute crystal realism. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, but the main projector, uh, you know, it's probably eight, nine hundred quid's worth of projector. So it's not yeah. a rubbish thing, but it's obviously not the best you can buy. 
Um, but the detail in that, you just can't see it as much. And yeah. I, I did try it, just plugging it into the main screen and just seeing what happened, and my got it transformed. Yeah. Which is why I'll be uh, why I'll be changing the projector, I think, to that. Yeah, I mean, we considered that with ours because ours is on a warp screen. Funnily enough, mm. this background is our projector screen. Yeah. So, um, but it is a warp screen, so you have to use software to warp the image, which takes even more uh, clarity out of it. it yeah, no yeah, hundred percent. I, I definitely wouldn't go projector again. Yeah. Never. Yeah. So yeah, lack of realisms in the surroundings it can make it harder to dead reckon. So one of the great things about that is you can uh, link up your Sky Demon, so you can verify where you are on there if you need to. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we asked Steve, uh, head of training directly, would you buy a simulator as a PPL? And he, he said no, actually, because really? he just said that for, for what you get out of it, um, as a training tool, it's not that beneficial. You know, we know so many people who have never touched a sim and they, they do really well on the course. So yeah. I think it very much depends on what you want to use it for. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Faisal, yeah. for instance, using a G1000, yeah. cracking. I mean, yeah, you yeah. didn't have to go the whole hog and buy yeah, all that. Yeah. You could have just bought a G1000 unit. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if, if if he wants to practice <coughs> from both sides or whatever, then, yeah, I think that's a good idea. For me, it, it's done me, well, it kept me sane through lockdown. Yeah. Um, I've got a 530 Garmin in that. There's a 430 in the plane that I fly, but mm. that's, you know, I, the same, I literally got, yeah, they yeah. do pretty much. Uh, you know, I got, I got into the plane and I knew how to use it. It yeah. was, um, and then IRR for me. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah. I can practice bits on that. So I think it, it, at the start it was just a bit of fun. Yeah. Would you really buy one? Well, probably not. But you might make a few bits for your for yeah. your own or buy a few bits and bobs. I suppose it really you know it really just depends what you want to use it for and what your budget is. You know, the more exactly. you spend, the better it gets. But you know, that being said, if you're going to put five grand into something that you can't get a qualification with, would that be better spent on your PPL itself? Yeah, probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's. It would, yeah. It very much depends on your circumstances, what you want to use it for. So, you know, I'm not going to give you a definitive answer whether I think it's good or bad. I think it's good for some things. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, yeah, I don't think there really is an answer to it. It's no. more if you want. It's an to opinion, do it. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, I think it's if you, if you if you want to do it. And I mean, I, I enjoyed building it. You know, it was um, I did enjoy building it, which is why I started upgrading it and yeah. stuff and carrying on. And I'm sure. Uh, well, I, I am looking at getting rid of that one, selling that maybe, and then. Um, Probably doing something like a 747 eventually, which will be a bit more of a project, but yeah. Does the missus even know about this? Oh. She doesn't come in the simulator room, to be uh, fair. It's, uh, it's very rare that she comes in. It's a man cave. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got, um, yeah, it's, it's all full of man stuff. <laughs> <coughs> Any purchases, Amazon straight down there, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do not knock the front door, <laughs> especially if it's not on the sack truck. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's got its own ring doorbell, and everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it means Steve went to a simulator show and they had like proper like seven three <coughs> cockpits with overhead panels and everything you could buy for it. It's yeah, mad, really good. I mean, you, you, can, you can buy those sort of things. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of money, but then you can also make them. Yeah. For which you know will cost you pence for switches and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you if you spent sort of five or six thousand quid on the overhead panel yeah. and you had the patience and time to do it, you, you could make it for a few hundred quid. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's um, it's just having a know-how, isn't it? I think it is having a know-how, but um, I think anybody that can just follow some simple instructions. As soon as, as, soon as you wired one switch, you get the hang of it. Simple yeah. as that. It's so easy to do. Um, so if we move away now from the PPL, um, you're doing your IRR at the minute, which is where I think it could be really yeah. useful. So do you want to talk us through what you use it for with the IRR? So I've uh, practiced holding in it, time turns. Um, uh, I've done some approaches um, and mists at uh, Birmingham and Cardiff, where I think mm. I'll probably go and do those anyway yeah. um, in, in the actual training. Um, I've done plenty of VOR tracking. Mm. Um, I've had a lot more in-depth use with the uh, 530, mm -hmm. um, which has helped just general flying, to be honest. I mean, yeah. we can all put direct to commentary yeah, yeah, yeah. or wherever. Uh, we were, I went to France recently, um, and although I was flying VFR, I put every single VOR in, yeah. and even used a few of the GPS fixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I'll use in the local area as well now, uh, ju just for practice, basically. So, I think um, flying, flying the instrument approaches and holds and whatnot. Uh, whilst you're not worried about 
control in the aircraft. It, mm -hmm. it, it helps because there's a lot to go through, especially with briefings for what you're doing. Where do you know what I mean? It's there's a lot to go through. And although I mean, I can fly a plane. I've got a I've got a license, so I, I want to concentrate obviously yeah. on procedures. And uh, yeah. and and a sim, a sim lets you do that. I can, I can stick that thing on autopilot and pretty much let it do what it does. But then I can still sort of set a briefing yeah. out in my head and. Hopefully, I, when we do it for real, it will uh, it will help. I think that's what it's best at, isn't it? Is it the is, procedural yeah. stuff yeah, where definitely. you're struggling to kind of grasp a new concept, and it makes it a little bit easier knowing yeah. that you haven't necessarily got to fly the plane as such. You know, you can concentrate on what the job in hand is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And to, I mean, to be fair as well, at the start of the PPL, I, I used a sim a little bit, and then during the middle of the PPL. No, nothing. Didn't even bother. I, I, well, I was too busy flying here too often. Yeah, exactly. Um, but You've I've been back to work since, haven't no, you? No, no, I haven't been back to work. No. <laughs> I thought I'd go soon and earn some money. Um, I can't that, say you're a kitchen when you walk in. Who's <laughs> <yeah. laughs> this bloke? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I didn't really use it uh, for quite a while simply because there wasn't anything I could use it to learn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, as soon as we started, I mean, when I did start using it again in, in the PPL was for the VOR tracking. Yeah. So when I did the first um, first sort of lesson with that, I thought, okay, I'll have a practice at that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and that, that was great. So I was back on it for that, and then I come off it. Uh, but yeah, with the IRR, it's, um, yeah, I'm on, on it quite a, quite a bit at the minute. Yeah. Although it's actually broken at the minute. That's, I tell you what, that's a big bugbear with me because an aeroplane, if it goes wrong, you can generally say, oh yeah, the vac pump's gone, we need to get it into maintenance or whatever. But with, with these sims, it's like, oh, that doesn't work. Which up. upgrade does it need Well, now? yeah, which upgrade was, <laughs> and it's like, oh, God. We had, a, part, we had a, a period where the nose disappeared off the aeroplane. Right. So you've got no nose, you've got no, it's really weird to fly without the nose right, on, just yeah, a visual, yeah. you know. And um, it's like, how do we fix that? You know, you bring up Derek at the simulator place, the nose has fell off, what do we do? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's weird, it's weird. Yeah, so they do do some, some strange things. <laughs> so then when the nose came back on, it had dropped down, so it looked like I think it was I remember just that, weird. Actually, yeah. I don't know whether it's actually been fixed, but, but there we go. <laughs> so yeah, they are problematic sometimes. I'd rather the nose drop off though on the sim. Yeah, I think, I think I've got to agree with you. Yeah, it's like, where's my engine gone? Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> gone quiet. <laughs> but yeah, no, thanks for coming on, Dave. Yeah, I hope no everyone uh, yeah. found that interesting. And yeah, you know, if you've got a sim at home, go and have a play around with it. Um, have a look at that sim if you haven't done already. If you've got Sky Demon, you can hook that up to it and just go and have some fun, really, isn't it? Just, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. And don't forget to uh, smash the like button and uh, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.